Welcome to your cozy slow flow. This is a great practice for you just to move around in your body those days where you just feel like you're lazy, but you just need to just get some action in the body. We'll move nice and slow and guaranteed it'll feel nice and cozy for the body. We're gonna need two blocks for practice, but go ahead and just set them off to the side because we're gonna need them later on. Let's start on our back in a supine position. And just right away, hug your knees right into your chest. And as you hold on to the knees or the front of the shins, feel free to gently rock a little right to left, side to side, just feeling the full surface of so the back of the pelvis on the mat. And as you come to center, let's keep the right knee bent and just extend your left leg forward on your mat. Interlace your hands around your right hamstrings as you pull your right thigh in towards your right rib cage, and then just slightly slide it out like your kneecap is looking to your right shoulder head. Let's go ahead and just circle out the right ankle moving in one direction and then the other direction. Nice. So when you pause the movement, let's keep the knee bent, but release your hands off to the side and then slide the leg forward. Once again, keeping the knee bent, all we're going to do is kind of just circle out through the hip socket. So just drawing out the letter O on the ceiling with our knee, twirling it in one direction a couple times, and then the other direction. Beautiful. When you pause in the center, bend your left knee now to cross your right ankle over the knee, or the thigh rather, and we'll come into reclined pigeon pose, threading your right arm in between your legs. So you can lace the hands around the left hamstrings. Take a few moments here, just pressing your right knee away from you, your left thigh towards you. And then we'll straighten the left leg out, pushing the heel to the sky, and begin to press your left hamstrings firmly into the basket of your hands, so much so that you'll start to lift your shoulders and you'll lift your head, maybe gazing to the knee or to your toes. And then as you exhale, we'll slowly lower the shoulder blades and the back of the skull. Well, you'll now bend your left knee and then set that foot flat to the mat. Keep the shape of the legs as you release your arms and we'll place a left hand to the lower part of your right shin to help guide that right foot over to the left side of your mat. Once that foot lands, let's reach the right arm along our ear. Now imagine you have a third hand to press your right thigh forward towards what is the front of your mat, so you're getting a little bit more stretch that runs into the outer rim of your hip. Beautiful, as you exhale, let's release that. Take a moment, hug your knees into the chest. And then we'll keep the left knee bent, so now the right leg will extend long on our mat. Again, as you're holding onto that left shin, guide the leg in a little diagonal, like your left knee wants to look to the left shoulder head, where now we can twirl around in the ankle a few times in one direction and the other direction. Beautiful. As you now pause, we'll keep the knee bent and release the arms. Slide the leg forward just a bit. And here we're just going to circle around into the hip socket. Just twirling around, noticing how like if you're like me, felt a little lock at the hip, all perfectly fine. But just make sure you're rotating in one direction and the other direction. Nice. We'll pause that. Bend the right knee, set the foot flat to cross the left ankle over the thigh. Let's come into that reclined pigeon pose. Throw the left arm in between your legs. So now you can just create the interlaced hands around the right hamstrings. So as your thigh just presses into your hands, you'll use your left elbow to just help nudge that left thigh forward. Now straighten the right leg to the sky. And again, as the leg just continues to push into the basket of your palms, let that slowly start to lift the shoulder blades and lift your head as you gaze to your right knee or upward towards your toes. Slow and steady, let's lower the shoulder blades in the back of your skull as we now bend the right knee again, release the arms to the side. Your right hand will lower or reach for the lower part of your shin to help guide that left foot over to the side of the mat. Your right arm will now reach along your ear just to really increase the lengthening in that left side waist as the left hip crease reaches away from your left armpit. And that imaginary third hand just nudges your left thigh forward. 
Beautiful, let's release that. Coming through center, hug your knees back into the chest, and then slide your hands underneath the knees to rock up into a cross-legged seated position, and it doesn't matter which shin is in front. From here, as you inhale, reach both arms up to the sky, and as you exhale, place your left hand to the right thigh. Your right hand will anchor behind you for a twist. As you inhale, lengthen it through your spine. Exhale, rotate, even turning your chin to your right shoulder head. Now just stay here and pick up your back arm, your right arm, turn the thumb to the sky, and then go ahead and turn the thumb down towards your mat, and then flipping the palm as far as it will go so you get the internal rotation at the shoulder. And then go ahead and turn that back around, thumb to the sky, and then maybe even flipping the palm all the way up to the sky. So now you're externally rotating the shoulder. One more like that. Go ahead and turn the thumb down and back and then turning the thumb forward and up, palm to the sky. Nice, from here now take that right arm, reach it up and forward, slide the hands to cut both knees, and then tuck the chin into the chest as you round the spine, maybe even pick up the knees, scoop out through the tailbone. And then we'll lower the knees down, unravel the arms and reach them overhead with your inhale, it's fine, the twist as you exhale, right hand down outside the leg, left hand anchors behind. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, rotate open. And again, you're moving your chin towards your back shoulder head, so you're finding rotation right into the cervical, right into your neck. Keep the twist, but pick up the left arm. Turn the thumb to the sky to begin. And as we internally rotate at the shoulder, guide the thumb down and maybe back behind you. And then start to rotate the hand so the thumb will face up and then back behind you again, so the palm faces up. So really the thumb is kind of a point of reference as you're just finding that rotation internally and externally at your shoulder head. Pause in neutral and reach that left arm up and forward. Well, now we'll slide the hands in front of the knees, cup the knees, and then round the spine. As you press to the outer feet, scoop out through the belly and drop your chin to the throat center. Beautiful, slowly release that and inhale, bring both arms up overhead. And then exhale, slide the hands to the heart center. Let's come onto our hands and knees and into a tabletop position, shoulders directly over the wrists. And then extend your right leg back and then your left leg back so you're right into plank pose. Lift the hips up and back, come into a downward facing dog. In your down dog, bend just your right knee and then press your left heel as close to the mat you can, just feeling a nice stretch in the back of that left leg. Then simply take your right knee and point it to the left side of the room. And then as you anchor down against your left palm, lift your left hip crease up and back just to feel more space on the left side waist. Pivot back to center, knee forward, and we'll switch. Bend your left knee, press your right heel a little closer to the mat. And now point your left knee to the right side of the room, pressing down and forward into your right palm, lifting your right hip crease up and back. Beautiful, come back through center. This time bend both knees and then press your chest to your thighs. Really lengthen out the spine as both hands anchor down and forward. Then slide it forward into plank pose. As you exhale, no, lower just the knees, the chest and the chin come into Ashtangasana. With the inhale, slide the chest through your arms as you release the legs, come into Cobra pose. And as you exhale, child's pose, send your hips back towards your heels, both arms reaching forward. Take a moment here with a deep breath in through the nose and a deep breath out through the mouth. Curl the toes under, come into downward facing dog from here, lifting your hips up and back. With your next inhale, lift your right leg back and up in the air. As you exhale, let's step the right foot forward, drop the back knee down, and keep your hands to the mat for just a moment. Let your pelvis just drop down and forward as you peel the chest up and widen out your collarbones. Then as you exhale, shift your hips back, come into half split just for a beat, and we'll move through those two postures back and forth with the breath. Sit the pelvis down and forward, inhale, lift the heart up. Exhale, shift your hips back for your half split. One more. Inhale, exhale. 
Now, as you inhale to re-bend in the knee, let's reach your arms up overhead, come into Anjaneyasana. And as you exhale, cactus out your arms wide to the sides as the bottom tips of your shoulder blades move forward to the sternum and your heart will lift. Inhale, bring both arms up overhead. Exhale, place the hands down, frame your front foot. Step back, come into plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now inhale, go ahead and lift your left leg up in the air. As you exhale, hug your knee in towards the chest. We'll gently step forward to the top, dropping the back knee. Tent out the fingertips, and again, just let your pelvis drop down and forward as you peel the chest up. And as you exhale, we'll shift it back come into that half split, toes to the sky. And as we move through the breath, we'll lunge forward and inhale, lift the heart up. Exhale, shift it back to your half split. Inhale. Exhale. Now as you inhale to lunge forward, let's now lift the chest and the arms overhead for our low lunge. Then exhale again, cactus out the arms to the sides, lift and lengthen away from the pelvis, turning the chest to the sky. Inhale, arms reach overhead. Exhale, place the hands down. Inhale, step to your plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. From down dog, just glide it forward on the inhale for plank. Knees, chest, chin, exhale. Inhale, cobra pose, move the heart forward and up. Exhale, child's pose, send your hips back. Taking a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. One more inhale. And exhale. Meeting back in our downward facing dog, go ahead and curl the toes, lift your hips up and back. This time, slowly walk forward to the very top of your space, come into a standing forward fold. Separate the feet about inner hip width, so just enough where your fist can slip right in between the inner feet. Once you're here, go ahead and bring your hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. Extend the arms just a bit straighter as you drip the fists up and overhead. Aiming the crown of the head to the toes, some softness in the knees. But really drive the heels down as you lift the balls of the sit bones to the sky. Nice. From here, bend just your left knee. Right leg will straighten a bit as you pivot your chest to turn right. Come through center. Bend your right knee, dropping that right shoulder to the knee. Left leg straightens as you pivot the chest left. Come in through center, and now place your interlaced hands to rest at your low back. Create fists in your hands, and use those fists just to pat out your low back, pat out your glutes, your outer hips. You're just gonna start to make your way down the legs, so your hamstrings, maybe lift the chest, get a bit of your quads, and then just start to make it down to your calves, your shins eventually down to the feet where we inhale, lengthen out, and exhale, fold in. Rise to stand as you inhale, reach the arms out wide to the sky, palms face or they touch, and then exhale, slide the hands to the heart, samastitihi. Go ahead and step your left foot back, and then come into warrior two, lunging into your right knee, stacking your upper body directly over your pelvis. From here, flip your right palm. Let's reverse. Inhale, reach your right arm up and alongside your ear. Then as you exhale, let's come into a modified side angle. So anchor your right forearm on your thigh. Reach your left arm up and alongside the ear. Rotate the thumb so it turns upward. Again, it's that point of reference. So now you can find that internal rotation at the shoulder head. Feel as if you're standing more on your back knee than your front, or rather your back foot than your front foot. Taking one more breath, then gaze downward, and as you exhale, we'll place both hands downward to the mat. Pivot on the ball mount of your back foot and drop that knee down. This time, keep the toes curled under. As we straighten the right leg out, begin to walk all the way back so you can sit your left sit bone on your left heel. And then just simply rock a little side to side, rolling to the pinky toe, to the big toe, 
really stretching out the fascia of the foot. Beautiful. From here, go ahead and walk forward, but keep that left leg straight as you slide the heel forward, and now release the top of that back foot. We'll slide the right heel over to the left, so the leg's on a diagonal, and then walk your hands out to the right. Now, I like to pick up my back foot and kind of swing it off the mat just a bit so I'm not torquing at the knee. But my front foot, if you'll take a look at it, so you can start to roll to the outer part of your heel, like you're trying to touch your pinky toe to the mat. From that point, feel as if you're isometrically dragging it to your right hip, really firing up your IT band all the way to your outer hip. Beautiful. When you unravel the face forward, keep the leg where it is, but as you bend the knee, set the foot flat, and now slide your back leg in and forward to have a seat for Ardha Matsya Andrasana. Place your right hand behind your back and inhale, reach your left arm up. Exhale, tuck the arm just outside of the leg to turn and twist. Beautiful. Inhale, we'll gaze it forward. As you exhale, let's counter the twist. So just place both hands to the left side of your mat. Maybe even drop the head as you turn your twist to the other side. Nice. Go ahead and bring both hands forward. And then let's step forward, crossing at our feet. So your left foot will just slide forward. Walk the pinky toe sides of the feet a little closer, seeing your right foot over the left foot. And now walk your hands just a bit over to the right as you nudge your hips to the left. And maybe even try wrapping your right hip crease back in space just to get a little bit more opening in your left side waist. Go ahead now and walk your hands in front of your feet. Exhale, let's unravel the feet for a forward fold. Glide your hands to the hips, slowly roll up to stand, slightly tuck the tail as you stack each vertebra on top of each other, and then coming all the way up. All right, other side. Go ahead and step your right foot back. Come up into warrior two. Upper body stacked directly over the pelvis. Flip the left palm. Let's inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle prep will bring that left forearm on the thigh, right arm along the ear. Again, turning the thumb up, you'll see the eye of the elbow look towards the top of your head as your upper arm rotates inward. Again, feeling as if you're standing more on your back heel, even though our upper body's leaning to the front heel. One more deep breath. Gaze it downward, we'll frame up that front foot as you pivot on the ball of the back foot. Go ahead and drop the back knee. We'll walk all the way back so our right sit bone will make some connection with the right heel. So those toes are curled under, and you'll just simply rock a little side to side. Uh, so you'll definitely feel it in the sole of the foot, big toe, even rock all the way. Get that pinky toe. Sometimes that guy doesn't want to touch the ground. Beautiful, guys. From here, as you come out of the pose, keep the left leg straight as you slide the heel forward and then release the top of your back foot. We'll take the left heel and just bring it over to the right side of the mat on a diagonal as we walk our hands left. Again, you can always pick up your back foot and swing it off the edge of the mat so you're not torquing that knee. Root the outer left heel down into your mat. Isometrically drag it toward your left sit bone. Now go ahead and walk your hands forward. Step on the sole of that left foot so now we can slide the back leg in and have our seat, Ardha Matsya Andrasana. Left hand behind your back. Inhale, reach your right arm up, and then slide the arm just outside the leg so you can rotate and twist, gazing past our left shoulder. I encourage you, too, to even turn your eye gaze as far as you can to the left, as if you want to see what your left shoulder blade looks, at, looks like. As we unravel the twist, we'll counter it to bring our hands out to the right. And as you turn and rotate right, you can always drop the head. And ceiling this nice stretch that runs in the back body. Face it forward now, where we come into that standing forward fold with feet crossed. So now that right foot steps forward, pinkies toe sides of the feet a little close. 
And then we'll walk our hands a bit to the left as we nudge our hips right and a little wrap of the right hip crease back. Simply let your head relax. Feel as if you can get your nose to touch that left outer knee. Nice. As we walk our hands in front of the feet, exhale, unravel the feet for a forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen for monkey pose. Exhale, fold into both legs. This time, step it back. Come to downward facing dog, lifting your hips up and back. Take a few moments here, just really stretching out through the body, feeling as if your spine was this exclamation point from the tailbone to the crown of your head. From here, let's slide forward to plank. Exhale, lower the knees to the mat where you'll sweep your feet out in front of you. Now, once your legs are forward, you can grab your blocks to assist you in this next position coming into a wide-legged forward fold or Upta Vishta Konasana. So the blocks are pretty helpful to either rest your chest or your forearms down onto. But once you're set, legs to the side, go ahead and reach around, get some glutes out of the way so you feel grounded into the sit bones. And then begin to walk your hands forward. Again, you can take a little pit stop where the forearms can just rest on the blocks and you can drop the head. But if you feel you can move a little bit further forward, you can lower the height of the blocks to either support the chest or support the arms again. And then my more flexy folks, you know you can always ditch the blocks. But sometimes, even if I know I can touch the mat, just feeling that little extra support is just quite helpful. So then I can just soften into the pose for a bit. How about we take one more deep breath here? And then just very slowly start to make your way out of the pose, lifting your chest up. Set the blocks to the side. We'll need them again later. But as you bring your legs forward in front of you, bend just your right knee, placing your right foot inside that left inner thigh. And then just anchor your left hand just outside the hip. With an inhale, reach your right arm up. And as you exhale, reach forward on a diagonal. So like you're reaching for the far corner of your mat and either grab hold of your calf, the ankle, or the pinky toe side of the foot. With another inhale, let's lengthen further. Then as you exhale, reach forward and down, adding just a hint of rotation where your right rib cage starts to roll and look to your left inner thigh. And that way that's gonna get a little bit more into the lower part of your back, right into the QL. With your next inhale, lift the head, look forward. Exhale, slowly release the pose. And we'll just switch out. So extend your right leg forward. Place your left foot into your right inner thigh. Right hand just anchors outside the hip. We'll reach out left arm to the sky. And as you exhale again, reach forward on that diagonal. Lengthen and lengthen. And as your hand finds a place on the leg, we'll give it one more inhale. And then exhale, reach forward and down. And again, it's just a little rotation, that left rib cage rotating to the right inner leg line. Stay anchored and firm against your left sit bone and that left thigh. Once again, accessing just that lower back stretch. With your next inhale, lift the head and the gaze. Exhale, slowly release. And now bring the soles of your feet together, knees wide. But this time, slide the feet forward so there's this bigger diamond shape of the legs. Go ahead now and just thread each arm underneath your calves and start to wiggle your torso a little bit inside the legs a bit more. You can either place the palms flat or even cup the palms over the tops of the feet. One isn't better than the other. It's whatever you prefer. But as you inhale, let's lengthen the chest a little bit further, and then exhale, reach forward and down. At that final moment is where you can start to round a little bit into the spine. Once again, in this particular posture, it's a great stretch for the lower back. 
So think about your navel center drawing in and back and up towards the heart center, just for allowing for a little bit more space in the back body. And then slowly inhale, lift the head up. Exhale, release each arm slowly. And then just place your hands just outside the knees to close the legs in and then make your way down onto your backs. Once you arrive on your back, let's go ahead and take one of our blocks. In fact, let's take both of our blocks and then you'll take the blocks together to make one long block at the lowest height. When you lift the hips up, slide that shape right underneath the back of the pelvis. All right, so it gives you a lot more surface area to rest. And once you're set, just let the arms drape alongside your body. Keep the feet anchored to the mat for just a moment. And then eventually start to pick the feet up and extend the legs to the sky. Now, the tendency here is that we want to just lock those legs out straight and flex the feet. But can you try to relax? So soften through the knees. Relax your feet and your toes. In fact, close your eyes for just a moment and visualize this. Imagine the same shape of your body, but turned upside down, where your legs were dangling downward rather than upward. So no effort. But this does combine that idea of sukha and stira, the idea of using that strength, the effort and stira, and sukha, that ease. And just take a few moments here. It's a wonderful way for us to just reverse the blood flow from the legs, letting it move back to our heart, to our brains. And then just ever so slowly, start to hinge at your knees, but don't let the feet fall to the ground quite yet. Just let the feet dangle for a moment. You'll feel that rush of blood move to the shins, the calves, the feet, the toes. And then just slowly touch the feet downward to the mat. When they arrive, lift the hips up, set the blocks off to the side for just a moment here. And then just take one of your blocks and place it in between your inner knees and thighs. Toe heel the feet a little bit wider, a little wider than your hips. It doesn't have to be mat width. So the knees are knocking in with the block inside the legs, which kind of eases a little bit into the hip flexors this way. And then reach both arms now to the sky, see the palms face. You're going to cross your right arm over the left and just simply let the arms drape over your chest. Now, no need to reach the fingertips to your shoulder blades. Same concept here, just let your hands relax, your fingers relax, and even feel the weightiness of the arms against your chest. And just simply know that your body is breathing. Then inhale, reach both arms to the sky so you can switch left over the right, draping the arms over the chest, Fingers and hands really effortless and at ease. Just breathing so deeply where we can feel the chest press up against the upper arms. Inhale, bring both arms to the sky. And then we'll exhale, let the arms drape alongside the body. Go ahead and grab that block, take it out and then toe heel the feet in closer again. This time we're using the blocks again, but when you lift your hips up, you're gonna slide the blocks to support your glutes, not the low back. So in fact, the blocks might end up more in like a V-like shape, adjusted accordingly. So you feel support of the blocks underneath the glutes. Now bring the soles of your feet together and simply let the knees drop wide. All right, so right away, if you tend to feel it in your low back, try adding just a little scoop of the tailbone so you have more space in the lumbar. With the support of the blocks underneath the glutes and the height of this as well, 
you'll feel a lot more external rotation at our hips, really getting that stretch that runs into the inner hamstrings, running through the groin. So just simply soften into it for a bit. Take one more moment. And just very slowly, you'll start to close the knees in so you're back on the soles of your feet. Press into the feet to lift the hips up, slide the blocks out, and then when you lower the back of the pelvis down, take those blocks to slide underneath the back of your knees or even at the, kind of at the thighs. So you're a little bit more supported now for Shavasana. Legs out nice and wide and supported. And now the arms will rest alongside, palms to the sky. Take a deep, full breath in through your nose. Hold at the top without any tension. And then open your mouth, sigh out your breath. Once again, deep, full breath in. Hold without tension, big sigh out. And now just simply seal the lips and allow your breath to move naturally as you just take a moment of rest. Now just keep your eyes closed and your body in the stillness. And use your mind's eye just to visualize the breath as it re-enters your body in a deep way. Start to move through your fingers and your toes, your hands, your feet. Inside the legs off the blocks as you reach your legs out and the arms overhead on a big inhale. And as you exhale, hug your knees right into your chest. Roll over to one side of your body and then make your way up into a seated position, either crossed at the legs or on your shins, tall in the spine. Maybe just pause for just a moment just taking in the effects of your practice, fully grateful for our body's ability just to move and breathe in such a short period of time, but just feeling more spacious, more refreshed. And then bring your hands together right at your heart. Slide your thumbs to your third eye center as you now bow to seal our practice. Namaste.